we have new ESCs. Now I'm not gonna tell you from who, but these have an F3 microcontroller unit, which means an F3 processor. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have a mailbag time. Now it's not as big as usual, but that's totally fine. I just need to keep up with the things I'm getting. So we have a couple of pretty unique stuff and some regular stuff that's basically new. So let's start with hmm, the interesting stuff. We have new ESCs. Now I'm not gonna tell you from who, but these have an F3 microcontroller unit, which means an F3 processor, kind of like the SPF3 flight controller, so it's a lot faster. So these are pretty interesting. And um, they're from <clears throat> Hollybro. Um, so yeah, I really can't say who they're from just yet, but yeah, that's something that was provided to me by a company. So we're gonna be testing those. I don't know when, but I'm gonna be testing them. I can't, cause this is pre-production. I can't really tell you what I find, but later on once they come out and stuff and we test the original production model, I'll tell you how those, how those performed and how much of a difference they are now. So here we have the Kakute. F7, I think we have the all-in-one and we have the flight control. These were provided me by Hollybro. Thank you, Hollybro, for probably watching my last video. So this is the all-in-one flight controller. It's the F7 flight controller. I don't know if I'm supposed to show this just yet, but um, I don't even know if they're released or not. But yeah, I got both of them. The flight controller they sent me and the all-in-one flight controller with a 4-in-1 ESC and Tico 32. I mean, that's what you want to put those with because you have to use the ESCs from Tico. And let me tell you why. It's not because it's a Hollybro Tico and it's a Hollybro product. It's because it's the cleanest ESC. Now, if there's another cleaner ESC, I tell you that's what you want to use with this because they are using the sensitive gyro and F7 flight controllers. Now, I don't know the current beta flight updates with the F7s. I'll have to look into that. I haven't really flown any F7s just yet. And one of these is going to be our on a newest build. Probably another frog. I really want to build another frog 6-inch. And if you want to get a frog 6-inch, check the links down below. You can get them from my shop. All right, so we put those to the side. Let's get another something a little bit more interesting. Kiss iFlight. What? Yes, iFlight has licensed Kiss flight controllers. Now, this is pretty damn interesting. And I mentioned this a while ago. <laughs> I couldn't find it. But holy crap, look at this. It's a beautiful board, very beautiful. Um, I don't know how the hell to configure KISS. I'd never done it before, and I don't think it's gonna be that difficult, but this is gonna be uh, pretty interesting. Uh, since everyone's, you know, everyone's asked me, try KISS product, try KISS product, now we need KISS ESCs. And I saw um, Rotoriot, I think, they, they, that KISS released a new ESC or something of that nature. So 25 amp ESC. So maybe we'll try to get some of those uh, and see how well that performs. So this is going to be pretty cool and pretty interesting. There's a missing component here. I don't know if it's uh, forgot to solder it on or it's supposed to be like that. But yeah. Uh, another thing, what I think I noticed on this, if I remember correctly, was it this? Let me just double check because the current trend is to add a 9 volt regulator on board. And once you do that, uh, you get super clean video, but that doesn't mean your quad super clean. It just gives you good video at least. Yeah, there's no nine volt regulator on board, but that's totally fine. They do have telemetry uh, pad next to the motor. Well, we're gonna check into this later on. I'll leave a link to it down below. I forgot how much it costs because I didn't purchase it. I got it f for free from iFlight. Actually, I didn't even want to accept it to be honest. Anyways, um, let's see this. Now these are old ESCs. These are Spedex IS30 amp ESCs. Now why the hell would you get some? Well, because I lost the, the old, older ones I had, or I gave them away, I think. And um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and test uh, Spedex because everyone's like, do Spedex, and plus these are super cheap now, which is pretty crazy. That's why I went ahead and got some more to see how well they do on our forward motor testing setup because we didn't have the forward motor testing setup before, so. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Or oh, now it's gonna be pretty cool. So it's two to four S30 amp ESCs. I think they are Beale Hilly S. Yeah, they're just Beale Hilly S ESCs. So yeah, and they do have a nice fat heat sink. And here's another thing. This is new. Well, at least I think it's new. I've never seen it before. This is a Spedex IS30. It's the same version supposedly as these, but a four in one ESC. Caps look pretty good. Pretty good. Now I don't know how it's gonna perform. That's all I could really say right now. It's a, it's a D-Shot 600 ESC, which is BLES, BB2 chip. And here's another one branded from Spedex. Again, the IS100 here. 
and um, it's um, it's just a micro stack. So I'm planning on making another. Let's just, oh my goodness, it's super super thin stack. This is what I need for my uh, for my frame. The uh, what is it called? The drone mesh split saint. I actually lost two of them so far, which is terrible. So this is gonna be coming handy. I'm gonna build another one now. I have the HGLRC motors. Wow, this is so tiny. Oh, I don't have the caliper next to me, but we're gonna do a separate video for this. Let me just double check here on this little pad. Oh my goodness, it's around 10 millimeters of freaking stack height. This is a VTX flight controller and ESC. The ESC's filtration's okay, but there's really, um, it's not really that scary on these. It's an F4 processor, that's cool. I don't know even, I don't even know if it has OST. Filtration is very minimal, but you really don't need it. And I do not expect and I do not recommend at the current moment of time you setting this up with something like a 2306 motor and uh, expect to, you know, for it to be okay. It does have OSD. It's right there. Hell yeah, this is awesome. So it's an F4 with OSD and I'm pretty sure it's an MPU 6000 gyro. So that's very good to see. And it's just super awesomely stackable with their pins that I lost. There we go. What else does it come with? Actually, this is pretty nice, to be honest. So they give you a capacitor. And what is this? It just doesn't say anything. I think it's just this. Oh, it's a Rubicon low ESR capacitor. That's pretty cool. So let's see what they put here. 25 volt, 150 microfarad. Ah, that's more than enough, but I highly doubt you'll need it. But it's always nice to add it. And they do give you some, connect some connectors here because I think you can't solder to this board. Oh, that sucks. Everything's via connector, so your connector is going to have to be soldered to something. All right, that's nice. And they do have the little instruction manual, which is very nice to see. So that's pretty cool. Two more pieces here. Let's start with this one. This is from UFO. And uh, what is this? It's an ESC. It's a 40 amp ESC with a heat sink. Now, why would they put a heat sink? Well, maybe because they're trying to hide something. Let's crack it open. Um, let's crack this. I don't know how the hell I'm going to crack this guy open. Okay, it's pretty well stuck in there, and I don't have any screwdrivers next to me. That's super awesome, but we'll try to do it with this here. Don't try this at home. Oh, there we go. Capacitors look pretty good. Actually, this looks very familiar to this one. Where the hell is it? Almost. Not quite. Or maybe. No, it's not the same one pretty close it has the same amount of filtration as this guy which is the uh, spedex one uh, I could tell you something now I personally didn't give it the benefit of the doubt and I was thinking that they put the heat sink to cover up because it's a typhoon ESC um, but it turns out that it's not and um, usually UFO like is, is just like hack RC it's a hit and miss product and um, I mean the packaging looks nice it's gonna be well protected and the heat sink was not I could tell you the heat sink was was pretty good on but I mean if you take a look at the thermal compound it's okay I mean it's on all the MOSFETs it's a little bit better than the, the Dal RC how they went about doing it but the Dal RC's um, thermal compound that's holding the heat sink in place holy crap that took so much force out of me to get it out and um, yeah and I did it so props to me no, I'm just kidding all right put this aside well we did this one this one there we go so what is this here? This is, you know, I, to be honest, I'd be a douchebag if I didn't actually uh, check, get one of these. This is the uh, uh, SpeedyB. And this was not provided me by SpeedyB, by the way. Uh, this is the SpeedyB flight controller where I did a mod of how to just buy a super cheap module and stick it on there and make any flight controller do the same thing this guy does. Now, at first, I really didn't know its specs. Now, I know the Bluetooth module is built into this, if I remember correctly. It should. Where the hell is it? Oh, there's the antenna right there. Is it the antenna? I think it is. Yeah. Yes. Is it? Does this? Yeah, this is it. All right. So this is the one with the Bluetooth module built in, and you can connect to it via the apps. And that, now you just don't need your PC. Now, what I didn't notice at first was this thing has, if I remember correctly, it's all on flat controller, obviously. And I'm looking. There it is. Oh. Number nine is going to be our favorite number for a while. The nine volt regulator for the VTX. My favorite. I think this guy's there. This is a 3.3 volt regulator. Well, we'll, we'll dig into this. Look at this. It, pretty nice filtration on board. I can tell you that right now uh, for a flight controller. I don't see a barometer anywhere. Yeah, I don't see a barometer. 
Yeah, there's no barometer, but that's totally fine. I really don't care. But overall, this looks pretty good. The stack is pretty thick, so it does have good copper inside. You can kind of see it right there. If, you, if I don't know if you can see it on camera. But um, I do have high hopes for this. I do wish a couple things, though. The caps, were, the, the caps, the pads were a little bit larger for the ESC power, so you can, you know, push more current through. But that's totally fine also. And by the way, the hottest point on a quadcopter while you're punching out is not the ESCs. It's this area here. It's crazy dramatic. I mean, this thing changes temperature so fast, this area, that is just, it's ridiculous. Like, it hits 100 degrees Celsius, and it just drops back down in, like, a second to, like, 40. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. Uh, so if you probably put water here, it'll boil. I mean, if, if it doesn't short, but yeah. So this is going to be pretty interesting. I will be building this now. I don't know which one I'll build first. But I'm going to be doing more flight footage because I saw that you guys really missed it. To be honest, I thought it was just a waste of time for me. I didn't know you guys really liked my flying uh, footage or me testing fl in flight, you know. But um, yeah, I'll try to do a different scenario where I'll also put a voiceover. But overall, uh, this is going to be a pretty interesting couple days. I don't know what the hell I'm going to start off with. Maybe tomorrow we'll start with the SpedEx these spedex because they're cheap and you know uh, everyone's on a budget i'm pretty sure i'm on a budget a lot of people are on budget and um i really want to see how these perform on a four motor setup we just heard i've heard constantly good things about these escs but um i've never really put them on a quad and flew them if i remember correctly i just did like a one motor testing setup but now we're gonna do the four motor testing setup here and these flight controllers i don't know we're gonna put this on our four motor testing setup also Probably with some solo good ESCs or some cheap ESCs or noisy ESCs and watch that 9 volt regulator on board See if it's performing as well as a Dell RC engine and um, Should be pretty interesting. I, at least that's what I want to see This one does not have a 9 volt regulator on board. So you're gonna need some <clears throat> clean ESCs with this and um, I really don't know if I, I really need to look into kiss i have no idea anything about it to be honest i don't even know if it runs d shot or, or all these things so we're gonna have to figure that out probably in the manual somewhere but i really didn't check into it so we're gonna do a separate video anyways for each of these guys and um yeah that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and um one thing i just saw it right now i burnt a flight controller and I didn't burn it because I was flying it. I burnt it because I shorted it out with a freaking, uh, what is it called? With a screwdriver while I'm trying to bind it. And um, yeah, do you guys want a repair video or kind of like a debugging video where we were trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with this one. And uh, once we figure it out, if we can't fix it, then uh, I think I have a flight controller with a dead OSD. Maybe we can also do a video of replacing OSD from a flight controller to a flight controller. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm really curious about that. And um, yeah, again, sorry about that, guys. I'm going to let you guys go. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And please consider joining my Patreon. Help keep this channel going. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.